on this particular day, we were going to go up, support another bunch of NGOs that were open up a, a bunch of houses for, for the people who had nothing, you know, a real nice thing they were doing. So we decided we'll go up there, support these people that are doing these great things, and then maybe go to the beach for an hour. Been out all day, did that, coming back. So there's me, Sean, I'm driving, Sean's in the car in the front. My now wife, Jules, and two of her friends, female friends, are in the back. We're coming back, normal day. And at this particular time, the kidnapping thing had just stepped up more, you know. They're, they're realizing, grab a Western, because most people are paying money. It was, it was a means of income to, to them. And as we come into this sort of built up village, which was more shanty town thing, it's like a dirt type track. And as I'm coming down, it was like, almost like a, a, a scenario that we've done hundreds of times in the regiment. Situation awareness of spot the unusual, something's not right sketch. So I'm like, we're all driving there in the back laughing, we're chatting, me and Sean. And I just clock in front of me. Again, that's sixth sense, something ain't right. And I'm driving steadily down the road and in, in the road, walking towards us, about 50 meters away at the moment, three people, three blokes, you know, so around about the 20s age group. And they're walking to it and I'm noticing just their demeanor, it looks to me like they've got weapons. And I'm not saying anything to anybody, but I'm clocking it and I'm thinking, right, in my head now, I'm, I'm formulating a plan. And the plan's simple. I'm gonna fucking run these over. And I ain't got time to brief them, tell them what's gonna go on. And as I'm looking at them, beyond them, is like a big old um, industrial lorry. And it's coming across the road, it's gonna block the road. So as you're coming down the dirt track, down the right hand side, where the truck is, is a, a bit of a pavement and a wall, solid uh, brick wall. To the left are buildings, so I definitely can't get round to the left. The only way I'm going to get round is either before that lorry closes that gap or I'm going to have to mount the, the pavement. And I'm built, watching this scenario, it's building up in my head. So as we're driving towards it, I kind of look at Sean and I've got a feeling Sean's picked up on it as well. And now I've seen a pistol. I've seen a guy in a red jumper and he's walking, so he's, I can see the pistol in, his, in the bottom of his hand. The guy to the left had something, I couldn't tell what it was, whether it was a rifle down his side. And as we got near, they tried to bring the weapon up to, to, to stop us. So I just hit the gas. And I can see the lorry's now trying to close that gap as well. They're all in this together, they're going to block us in and kidnap us or, or do whatever they're going to do. So I drive straight at these people. Sean's cool as a cucumber, he's got it. The girls in the back are screaming, wondering what is going on. He's lost his mind. So I, I literally, I'm aiming at them. That's now my weapon. I'm going to, they, they're getting it. So I go out and they dive out the way. I then fucking mount the curb and literally down the side, I'm almost scraping the wall and I'm fucking, before the truck can close us in, through the truck and then just fucking spin it to the left and, fucking, and then just break down to normal driving again. And the, girl, the girls go, ah! <laughs> what the fuck's going on? I don't say anything. We're about five minutes away from our location, which was the hotel we were staying at, which was our hotel that we'd built. And then we drive into the hotel, they're white as a ghost, Sean's cool as a cucumber, I go <coughs> to the bathroom, we get into the hotel for us, get a drink, we go into our little hotel foyer. The girls are still going, what the fuck is wrong with you? What's going on? You know, all, all fucking disheveled. So Sean sat there and he's got a drink and he's got a napkin. I go to the toilet and he made up, it's that moment, you know, like true romance where he talks to himself in the mirror. Go out there, stay cool. <laughs> so I'm looking at myself going, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and I'm running it in my head. And I'm like, yeah, he did. So I come out, I don't say a word. I sit down next to Sean, Sean's got a map. He's got, he's got this napkin, he's just drew out exactly where he goes. These two, and I went, yeah, exactly. You know, bang, and that's what it was. Anyway, to finish off that story, which was, that was one of our best days. We, um, so that happens, then I tell the girls what had happened. And they went, I didn't realize. And I think it was at that moment where I said to the, these, the girl, now my wife, Jules says, if you are driving in a place like this, you have got to be prepared to use this thing as a weapon. And Jules never forgets that. I says, you have to be aware that it's the only thing that's going to save your life in a scenario like this. Anyway, I jump forward about two, three days late. No, same day. A few hours later, we get a report from the UN. Someone's been kidnapped on the uh, National Route 1. And what it was, same people, same location. This time it was... Uh, a female working for the UN on the back of a bike. They shot the driver, killed him, took her, kidnapped her, and then whatever they did for four or five days when they held her, which was not good. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing is more important than your family, your health, and you doing the right thing. It's not money, it's not material, it's not whether people like it or don't like it. They're the simple things, and you've just got to use that time wisely and, and make those moments. Spend the time with the people. You know, jumping slightly off a little bit, I always wanted to tell my dad I loved him. And I remember, I actually got to, I did do it. I actually did it. And it felt a real weird, weird moment. You know, it was when we knew my mum was dying and I was at the house and we were just chatting. I went, like, it just come out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I love you, dad. And he looked at me like, I just said, I've just robbed your, your wallet. He's like, look at me like I've gone strange. <laughs> and he's like, cause he's a big old bruiser. Like, you know, it's like, and they just changed the subject. So I went, all oh, right, I've said it. But I was glad I'd actually said that, you know. Make the time to spend with, because you, you just don't know what's around the corner. But make the time for the, what is worth making time for. That's yourself, your family, people that love you, and taking care of yourself. Time is everything. You know, time is the, the most valuable thing we have. You don't know how much you've got of it. You don't know when it's going to be taken away from you, and you've got to make the most of it. And I remember, I always said to myself, I used to say quite regularly, I'm going to sit with my dad and talk about my day in the power age and what I've been doing and this, that, the other. And then later on, after I got the, the MBE, my dad listening to the citation of why I got him, watching his face going, he did what? He had no idea. And I always said, I want to, I want to tell him about it. I, you know, I, I want to make that proud moment and me to, yeah, that was me, dad, I did this. And what I used to do, like everybody does, I'll do it next week. Kept putting it off, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. That is my biggest regret, not actually sitting down with my dad and just going, hey, this is what I've done like. But yeah, I was always trying to make him feel proud of me. And I know he was, but I wanted to hear him say it. And I wanted, I wanted to, to tell him things that would surprise me and make him even more proud of if you know what I mean. If, if young kids listen to this, would take one thing away. Time is the most important thing, not who you think you are, how much money you got, what materials you are, what your reputation is. Time is in everything and spend it with the right people and do the right thing. It's necessary to fail, because failing makes, builds resi resilience. You know, if you, one of these people, imagine if somebody who never gets anything wrong, you never really test it, you never really grow, you never really improve, that's, that's what, what you think you are, that's maybe what you are. I think it's important to go through hard times to realise the value of what is important to you, the simple things in life that are important to you. It, it, it's important to, again, to, to fail, to be knocked back, to show your real character of how you respond to that, how you get up and go forward again. Even if I've done it a thousand times and never failed it, I'll always think this could be the one I failed. Be aware I could get this wrong and it keeps me sharp and, and, and on my toes. I'm not afraid of it. I'm, I'm going to give it a go no matter what. You know, I also have that drive. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to be knocked down. I'm not scared to be knocked back. I'm still going to go at it. I'm going to try and reach that goal whatever that goal may be. I just say it to myself and I just believe in it. Thank you so much for watching the amazing Billy Billingham, a council estate kid who has just had sheer determination to turn his life into something special and inspire millions of people around the world. We love having Billy on. Hopefully he can come on again in the future. Today's video and documentary, as always, was supported by our sponsor, Huel. We would not have been able to do it without Huel. Huel have been fueling me for the past two years now, and I've used it from the world record Atlas Stone to my new world record where I'm training to do the world's heaviest marathon, 100 kilos for 26.2 miles or 220 pounds for the American audience for 26.2 miles, followed up by an ultra marathon every single day for 10 days straight which is going to have 60 pounds on my back ish um yeah it's been fueled by a huel so i've been drinking the ready to drink black edition which has got 26 vitamins and minerals 35 grams of protein and slow release carbs that help fuel me to make the documentary but also keep my performance ticking along whilst i'm training for the craziest event of my life so if you want to find out more and more of their products go to the link down below where you can find out more information and you can get exclusive offers like free t-shirts and free shakers and um, check the pin top comment out as well because sometimes there's something a little bit juicy down there as well. Have a blessed and productive day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.